myself, uh, Dr. Suresh Padmanabh, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Services at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. The disclaimer is basically whatever the discussion and the presentation is occurring here in this presentation is academic purpose only. If you would like to have any legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. At the same time, the conflict of interest is none. Opinion given by the presenter, that is myself, in this presentation is personal opinion and it is based on my experience working in community psychiatry, facts and research findings. The presenter alone is responsible for the views expressed in this presentation and not the institute I represent or affiliate. With this background, we will now discuss about psychiatric epidemiology. One of the important landmark studies is National Mental Health Survey, which was conducted between 2014 and 16. This was commissioned by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. And it was executed by Nimans, Bangalore. The study comprised of 39,532 individuals across 80 taluks, 43 districts and 12 states. That means it is a pan-India study. And the results were stunning. 13.7% of the population had a lifetime prevalence of psychiatric disorder and also 10.6% were suffering from mental disorder when this survey was done. That is cross-sectional prevalence was 10.6%. At the same time, 0.8% had severe mental disorder. If we extrapolate to the pan-India, that is across India, how does the numbers look? General population of India, if we take it as 130 crore, 10%, that is 13 crore, are suffering from one or the other psychiatric disorder. And 0.8%, that is 1 crore population, is suffering from severe mental disorder. This is not just 1 crore. If a one person in a family suffers from severe mental disorder, the whole family suffers. That means I'm talking about 1 crore families suffering from the effect of severe mental disorder. Along with this, there was another astonishing findings, treatment gap. Treatment gap is defined as percentage of people with mental disorder who are not on treatment. There has been always a stigma and criticism, psychiatrists medicate persons with mental illness. But this study proves it wrong. If you look at the bar chart, Bipolar affective disorder, 70% were not on treatment when the study was going on. Psychotic disorder, severe mental disorder, 75% are not on treatment. Depression, 85% not on treatment. Anxiety disorder, 83%. Alcohol addiction or dependence, you can call it as 86% not on treatment. My dear friends, this study clearly says 70 to 86 percent of persons with mental illness are not on treatment. There are many reasons like access to treatment is not there, continuous supply of medicines are not there, stigma, discrimination. Educated people say why are you taking psychiatric medication? Doctors discourage taking medication. This has to stop because the treat gap, treatment gap is 70 to 86 percent, my dear friends. And one more landmark study also occurred recently, that is National Survey on Extent and Pattern of Substance Use in India. This study was commissioned by Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India. And this study was executed by All India Institute of Medical Science, the premier institute of the country. And this study involved 2 lakh household surveys and comprising of 4 lakh 73 
1,569 individuals were assessed. This is not a small study, huge study, pan India. The report or the results are also stunning. 2.9 crore population are addicted to alcohol, are dependent on alcohol. They cannot live without alcohol. It is not just 2.9 crore. It is 2.9 crore families suffer because of one person having alcohol in the family. So my dear friends, don't look at it as just 2.9 crore individuals, 2.9 crore families that I would like to put it across. Imagine a father is drinking alcohol, the whole family suffers because of his alcohol use. So 2.9 crore is a huge number. Coming to cannabis use, there has been a debate whether to legalize the recreational use or not. But 25 lakh people are addicted to cannabis or dependent on cannabis. Friends, sorry to interchange this addiction and dependence. Many people in general population understand addiction. Dependence is a medical terminology. 25 lakh are dependent on cannabis. Coming to opioid, what we call it as hard core drugs. 28 lakh people are dependent on opioid or addicted to opioid drugs. 10 lakh on cocaine, 18 lakh on amphetamine, 12 lakh on hallucinogens, 7 lakh children are dependent on inhalants like petrol, Aresex, various other substance. My dear friends, 10% population is conservative estimate of psychiatric morbidity in India. Along with this, Suicide in India is another bigger problem we are facing. As per National Crime Records Bureau, in 2018, reported suicide are 1,34,516 suicide in one year. That translates into 368 completed suicide per day. Imagine 368 suicide per day into 10 is the number of attempted suicide per day. That means every day in India, somewhere around 3,000 to 4,000 people attempt suicide and 368 complete the attempt. It's really, really saddening to know this figure. And these are all just reported suicides. Unreported suicides are huge in number. But however, going through NCRB, we are heading towards a bigger pandemic. To address this issue, Mental Health Care Act of 2017 was implemented. And this is a landmark legislation implemented by the Parliament of India. As per the Section 18 of this legislation, there has been an obligation casted on each state. What does it say? Every person with every person, I'm not talking about every person with mental illness, every person shall have a right to access for mental health care and treatment from mental health services run or funded by the government. And this mental health services should be affordable, available in sufficient quantity and quality, accessible, without discrimination, acceptable to person with mental illness and their families and caregivers. That means first time a health legislation is making right to access for mental health care is a justiciable right. If you don't get this right, you can go to court. But the physical health is not justiciable. But here, this legislation, Mental Health Care Act, makes it a right to access mental health care, a justiciable right. Suppose if you don't get, you can go to court. What are those range of services that the government has to provide? outpatient and inpatient services of mental health care, halfway home, sheltered accommodation, supported accommodation, mental health services to support the family of persons with mental illness and home-based rehabilitation, hospital and community-based rehabilitation services, provision of child mental health services and old age mental health services. These services has to be provided 
from the community health centers and above. That means community health centers, district hospitals, medical colleges and tertiary care centers. And these services are mandatory. They are rights, rights of the persons of every citizen. So now the state has to provide these services. If they don't provide, as per section 18.5F, compensation has to be provided. That means the compensation should be provided till such time the services under the sections are made available. The appropriate government shall make rules regarding the reimbursement of cost of treatment. And also 1810 talks about the appropriate government shall notify essential drug list and all medicine on the essential drug list shall be made available free of cost for all persons with mental illness, both for allopathy and Ayush. 16th August 2019 this list has been released by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and this is available on the website. So my dear friends, there has been a huge paradigm shift in the mental health care. It is not charity, it's the rights of every citizen to access for mental health care. But however, we are talking about rights. What about the number of professionals? As per Indian Psychiatric Society, their registered numbers are 7,000 and odd psychiatrist but the recent study done by Naveen et al showed there are 9,000 psychiatrists in India less than 1,500 clinical psychologist less than 1,500 psychiatric social worker 2,000 psychiatric nurses this is as per the definition of mental health care act of 2017 look at this number and they have to provide care for 13 crore population and it's a big challenge if you ask me. And we have to now, these 9,000 psychiatrists will never be able to provide care for 13 crore population. And now we have to come up, with, come up with innovative solutions. At the same time, post COVID scenario, that means these, whatever the numbers are in the normal scenario. In a pandemic like coronavirus or COVID, what will happen? It is very difficult to assess or predict the psychiatric morbidity after the COVID, like after this coronavirus infection pandemic goes, what will be the mental health morbidity in the population? It's very difficult to predict. But however, in 1918 influenza pandemic, the impact on mental health, a survey or a kind of study was done by Seven Rick Malmont. He looked at the asylum hospitalization in Norway between 1872 to 1929. And he came up with the number, the average annual factor of 7.2 increase in the next six years occurred. That means by extrapolating the data of influenza 1918, that means our psychiatric morbidity 10% may increase maybe three or 4%, four times. That means we are talking about 30 to 40%. And this is just a prediction. And I'm not taking it will happen. But at this point of time, we have to provide for 10%. How the post-COVID scenario evolves, we don't know. But we should be ready to provide the services because it's not far. It may be this post-COVID, maybe in few months, it will go off, but it will leave behind huge scars and severe mental health issues in the general population. To conclude, we all as a citizens have a huge responsibility in India providing psychiatric care. And this psychiatric morbidity is huge in number. Now we have to find an innovative solution to provide care for this 13 crore population at least. And I don't know what is that innovative solution. It may be deprofessionalizing the services, reaching out and providing care at health and wellness center, providing medication and distribution of medicine at health and wellness center by a nurse, any other mechanism. And it's, 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 it's a huge opportunity and a huge challenge. At the same time, we all as a professionals and every citizens of this India have to reduce this treatment gap to zero. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a big challenge ahead. At the same time, a huge opportunity to prove that we are able to provide the services to our general population.
Dear friends, if you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel, YouTube, C. Suresh Paradmat, and subscribe and thumbs up for this presentation. And if you, there are many other videos which are available in my channel, please do look at it and leave comments. Thank you very much. Stay safe.